Sony might have dropped the ball when it comes to backwards compatibility in the PS4, but we're going to fix that. You're about to learn everything it takes to play your favorite PlayStation 2 games on your jailbroken PlayStation 4. Time to fire up your PC and your PS4. Greatness awaits, and we're starting now. Check the video description for the latest show notes and updates. You'll also find links to products and websites featured in the video. I think it's a good idea before you get started in all of this to check the PS2 Classics Emulation Compatibility list to make sure that the game you want to play will work with PS4 emulation. Most games play really well, but there are a few with some challenges. I'm going to use Chrome Search feature to go directly to the game we're using for demonstration purposes in this video, Snoopy vs. The Red Baron. Upon taking a closer look, you'll see that the game is listed as having minor issues. It is playable, but there are some graphical glitches, which is why I picked this game as an illustration. Also check the description for the game, because it may have a specific listing for an emulator it requires. In this case, it requires the Rogue emulator. Hosted on the Mega.nz website, there's a download available that you need called PS2 FPKG. This is a program that converts your PlayStation 2 ISO images into package files that can be installed and played on your PlayStation 4. Click the download button on the page to grab the file. You'll find the file you downloaded in your downloads folder, but I've also staged up an ISO file for Snoopy vs. The Red Baron. To get started with the process of converting your ISO files over to package files for your PlayStation 4, unzip the downloaded file. And just as a bonus tip here, you can save yourself an extra folder in this structure by just going right here to the directory path and deleting the excess right after the word downloads. Then just run the extraction process as normal. Then once the zip file is extracted, delete the zip file from your downloads folder to eliminate clutter. With that out of the way, double click into the folder that you just uncompressed. You'll see an EXE icon that has the PlayStation logo on it. It's recommended by the program's author to run the program as administrator, so right click on it and select Run as Administrator. And if you get this message the first time you run it, click More Info, then come down to the bottom right corner and click Run Anyway. It should only ask you that the first time. Then at the UAC prompt, select Yes. You'll need to tell the program where to find your disk images. Follow down the listing to Disk 1 and click Select. This disk is inside the Downloads folder in ISO form. Click on your disk image and then click on Open. You can also repeat this process for any multi-disk games by just loading them into the Disk 2, Disk 3, Disk 4 and so forth. Remember how one of the things we looked at on that PS2 compatibility chart was which emulator to use? This is where you need to pick this. There are two choices, Jack 2 and Rogue One. In this case, it's Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Choose the matching emulator from the drop-down list here. I need to pause for just a moment here to explain something important. In all of the previous versions of Windows that I used this software, it had no problem loading up the box art in the wallpaper or splash screen startup screen for the games by loading the artwork files here. But I've tried this with multiple files with multiple games in Windows 11 and it simply does not work. But you'll be pleased to know the only thing you're missing out on is a custom icon and the custom splash background screen on your PlayStation 4 main menu when you launch the game. Everything else works 100%. Move the pointer down to Create FPKG and click on it to start the process. You'll be prompted for a location to post your FPKG file. This is important to note, you can't put it in the root of any storage. You have to put it within a subfolder somewhere on storage. In this case, I'm just using the Windows desktop. Click OK and at the next window, click OK to create the PKG file. The only visual indicator you'll get that it's doing its job is the set of animated ellipses you see in the bottom left corner, shown here. Once the process is finished, you'll see a pop-up message that says, Process Finished. Intuitive. Click OK to continue. You're done with this software at this point. You can just click the red X in the right corner to close it out. Now that that package file has been created, you'll need to copy it over to USB storage formatted in XFAT format. I'm just going to right click and select copy here and then insert a USB drive formatted in XFAT format into the PC. Once you have the drive in place, you can just right click right on the root of the drive and paste your package file here. Once you have the package file in place on your USB storage, you can close out any instances of File Explorer, eject the USB storage from your computer and put it into the rightmost port on your PlayStation 4, then power on your system. From your PlayStation 4's main menu, you'll need to access and activate the Jailbreak. Use the web browser to navigate to the Jailbreak website of your choice. In this case, I'm using the one from Hakuraifu. 
Haku Rei Fu. You know that one. I've found that Gold Hand works really well, so I'm going to launch Gold Hand from the website. If you need to learn how to jailbreak your own PlayStation 4, I have it linked for you in the description below and in the pinned comment. Once you have the jailbreak active on your system, you can press the PlayStation button on your controller to go back to your PlayStation 4's main menu. Now that you've got the jailbreak up and running on your PlayStation 4, use the D-pad to scroll up to the top menu. Then use the D-pad to scroll over to Settings and select Settings with the X button to continue. From the Settings main menu, use the D-pad to scroll down all the way to the bottom of the listings until you see Debug Settings and select it with the X button. Inside Debug Settings, you'll see a listing for Game. It's the first listing. Select it with X. Scroll down one listing to get to Package Installer and select that with the X button. You'll see your package file that's on your USB storage here. Select it with X to install the game to your device. Once you've finished installing the game, you'll get a confirmation pop-up in the top left corner notifying you that everything's all set. From here, you can press the PlayStation button on your controller to go back to the main menu. To launch your game for the first time, select it with the X button. You'll see the generic icon and the generic background, but the game's there. Remember I mentioned early on that I selected this game specifically because it does have some minor graphical issues but plays 100%? You can see a few bars from the prior screen listed behind this cutscene animation. But when it comes to the actual dogfighting battles, everything's all set. And remember, if you need help jailbreaking your PlayStation 4, help is just a click away right here on the screen and also linked in the pinned comment and description below.